We know that the universe is massive and most of it is large, empty space with astronomical distances between nearby objects. When we turn our gaze away from the Sun, planets, asteroids and comets, we find ourselves facing this deep space. It might seem like there's nothing between us and the distant stars. However, the reality is often different. The seemingly empty space beyond Neptune is not truly empty. Enter the Oort Cloud, a colossal ice cloud that envelops the solar system with the Sun at its center. This cloud is thought to be teeming with billions and trillions of comets and various other objects. So, what exactly is the Oort Cloud? How was this mysterious structure formed? Let's find out. Now, before delving into the Oort Cloud, let's first understand what comets are. Comets are like cosmic snowballs, composed of frozen gases, rocks, and dust that orbit the Sun. Typically the size of a town, these celestial bodies undergo a fascinating transformation as they approach the Sun in their orbit. The Sun's heat causes them to emit dust and gases, creating a spectacular glowing head, while the dust and gases form a tail that can stretch millions of miles away. Comets can be broadly categorized into two main classes, short period comets, also known as elliptical comets, and long period comets. Short period comets with orbital periods of less than 200 years are generally believed to originate from either the Kuiper belt or the scattered disk. These are two linked flat disks of icy debris located beyond Neptune's orbit, extending from 30 astronomical units AU to beyond 100 AU from the Sun. Short period comets share the same plane as the planets and have relatively stable orbits. On the other hand, long period comets have tilted and highly elliptical orbits, appearing from various directions in the sky and their orbits can last for thousands of years. While the Kuiper Belt's comets have relatively stable orbits, the scattered disk is dynamically active and serves as a more likely birthplace for comets. Comets transition from the scattered disk to the realm of the outer planets, where they become centaurs and then some are sent farther inward to become short period comets. The mystery surrounding the continuous appearance of comets, despite their eventual disappearance due to melting and burning up when they approach the sun, puzzled scientists for a long time. This enigma was addressed and solved by the Dutch astronomer Jean Oort in 1915. Oort, who was also the first person to find evidence for dark matter and determine the distance of our solar system from the center of the Milky Way, proposed a groundbreaking theory to explain the origin and trajectories of comets. Let's take a step back about 4.5 billion years to observe the early stages of our solar system as it coalesced from a flat disk of material around the Sun. The inner planets formed in a warmer, smaller and rocky region, while the outer planets developed in a freezing region, growing much larger. In this colder outer region, water existed in the form of ice combined with dust and other substances. These icy particles collided and stuck together, gradually growing in size through the process of accumulation. After the formation of planets in our solar system, the region where they originated still harbored numerous leftover chunks of ice and other materials known as planetesimals. These planetesimals comprised the same building blocks as the planets. The outer Jovian planets, possessing significant gravity, interacted with these planetesimals. Any chunks that came too close to these giant planets were either assimilated or sent into highly eccentric orbits. Many of these ice balls were either propelled toward the Sun or ejected into deep space. Trillions of such interactions occurred, with the small gravitational pull of each chunk accumulating over time. Consequently, the overall effect of these encounters led to the outward movement of Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, while Jupiter moved inward. 
As Neptune migrated outward, it engaged in numerous encounters with these ice chunks, flinging them into eccentric and tilted orbits. This dynamic reshuffling of the outer planets played a key role in the late heavy bombardment phase in our solar system. Today, there are three distinct populations of these objects. The Kuiper Belt, named after the Dutch astronomer Gerard Kuiper, constitutes the first region, with comets in stable orbits aligned with the planets. Extending from beyond Neptune's orbit, the Kuiper Belt spans about 2.7 to 4.6 billion miles from the Sun. The second region, the Scattered Disk, comprises icy chunks that were thrown into wild elliptical orbits by Neptune. Overlapping the Kuiper Belt, it extends to a distance of about 93 billion miles from the Sun. Beyond these two regions, there exists a spherical cloud of icy objects known as the Oort Cloud, extending from roughly 186 billion miles to 65 times farther out than Neptune, reaching a distance of almost a light year. Named after Jan Oort, the Oort Cloud is the source of long-period comets. Due to gravitational interactions with the planets, many icy planetesimals were pushed away from the Sun, and the galactic gravity likely caused them to settle in the borderlands of the solar system, forming the Oort Cloud. The outer Oort Cloud may contain trillions of objects larger than a mile, with billions being much larger, and neighboring objects tens of millions of miles apart. While its total mass is not precisely known, estimates based on Halley's Comet suggest a combined mass roughly five times that of Earth. The inner Oort cloud's mass remains uncertain, with no known estimates published. Notably, Pluto was the first Kuiper Belt object discovered, and subsequent discoveries, such as QB1 in 1992, expanded our understanding of Kuiper Belt objects. While numerous Kuiper Belt objects are known, Oort cloud objects remain elusive. Objects like Sedna and VP113, with highly elliptical orbits, though not very close to Neptune, may be Oort cloud objects disturbed by passing stars. But this remains speculative. It was estimated that about 6 billion Oort cloud objects remain since the formation of our solar system. However, when astronomers recalculated based on long-period comets' observations, the estimate surged to about 400 billion, revealing a significant discrepancy. One speculative idea to explain this discrepancy involves the possibility of alien comets from other solar systems being captured by our Sun during its passage near other stars. Another hypothetical explanation suggests the existence of an unseen planet in our solar system, positioned far beyond Neptune. The aligned orbits of some long-period comets and certain Kuiper Belt objects hint at a potential distant planet, possibly ten times the size of Earth. This theoretical planet, if it exists, remains elusive. The vastness of this region, combined with its considerable distance from Earth, makes exploration challenging. The Oort cloud is so immense that it could potentially conceal an entire planet, making detection difficult. Efforts to uncover the truth rely on future missions and observations. Space probes have yet to reach the Oort cloud, and Voyager 1 currently the fastest and farthest interplanetary space probe, will take around 300 years to reach the Oort cloud. However, its scientific instruments are expected to be non-functional by 2025. While the exploration of the Oort cloud presents challenges, there have been conceptual proposals for dedicated missions. In the 1980s, the TAU probe was envisioned to reach 1,000 astronomical units in 50 years, with the mission to search for the Oort cloud. Additionally, the Whipple mission proposed in 2014 aimed to deploy an observatory to detect objects in the Oort cloud and Kuiper belt. This observatory would monitor distant stars for transits up to 10,000 astronomical units away, 
providing valuable insights into this enigmatic region. While many methods have been proposed, the sheer distance and size of the Oort cloud have made it hard to study so far. But who knows, maybe one day soon, we will have the means to study this mysterious area in detail and find that elusive planet. So, spacers, what do we think? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Leave us a thumbs up if you liked this video and please comment, like and share. Don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications to stay updated on new and awesome space content. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.